Some devastating news came out recently for Seth Rollins, so we'll see what's new there. We'll also check out what's going on with Roman Reigns, Chad Gable, and much more. Starting things off with a very exciting developing story for Chad Gable. Chad Gable has been quietly on a really nice arc over the last few months. It wasn't that long ago where Chad Gable was challenging Gunther for the Intercontinental title, right in front of his own family and friends. It was the main event of Raw that week, and a lot of fans thought that Chad Gable had a fair shot at potentially dethroning Gunther. But unfortunately, Chad Gable didn't get the job done that night, and it ended with a tragic scene of his daughter being in tears. Just a very emotional and touching loss for Gable. And then, when WrestleMania 40 season rolled around and Gunther needed an opponent, a lot of fans were hoping to see that Gable got another shot. But Sami Zayn ended up getting that WrestleMania shot against Gunther, and Chad Gable wasn't initially jealous at all. He was actually the complete opposite. He was extremely supportive and even volunteered to train Sami Zayn for the big match against Gunther. And that training did eventually pay off because Sami was successful at dethroning Gunther in that WrestleMania 40 match. Chad Gable tried handling things the right way. He asked Sami Zayn for a shot at the Intercontinental title and how that could be the way that Sami repaid him for the WrestleMania 40 training. But when it came to that match against Sami on Raw, Chad Gable came up short again in yet another big Intercontinental Championship match. And that loss was the last straw for him and he turned heel moments later to take out Sami Zayn in front of his wife and hometown. So it's a heel turn and he's definitely being considered to be an evil character now. But if you go back and really look at that journey that we just talked about for him, you can see why he eventually reached his boiling point and reached to the point of no return. He just had enough and snapped. And on the April 22nd edition of Raw, they also addressed a big question that fans had. And that was the question of what will happen to the babyface faction, the Alpha Academy, after their leader, Chad Gable, just turned heel? Well, Chad Gable appeared with the Alpha Academy this week and absolutely tore them apart for how they're all pathetic in the ring and how they haven't been proving anything from all the lessons he's given them. He also gave each member a couple of lines about how they've been failing him so far and continue to be disappointments. Gable says that from this point on, it won't be helping others anymore. He's going to focus only on his own goals and how the whole faction will be loyal to him because this is what they signed up for and how they're all going to help him with the WWE Intercontinental title from Sami Zayn. Again, it's an understandable perspective from Chad Gable. He's been helping Sami Zayn and all the Alpha Academy members over the last few months so much that he's forgotten to prioritize himself, his own goals, and his own happiness. So he's getting back to that. And at least at this very moment in time, Alpha Academy seems to agree with Chad's new terms and direction for the group. No one spoke out. No one walked out of the group. So it looks like the Alpha Academy will be staying together with all of them trying to help out Chad Gable. There's also been rumors and speculation floating around that Chad could go on to lead a new faction with the Creed Brothers in the near future as well. So maybe his current objective with the Alpha Academy will fail, and that'll somehow lead him into leaving them and creating a new faction with all new members. Some very sad news just came out regarding Seth Rollins and his status. The Rock previously labeled Seth Rollins as the WrestleMania 40 MVP, and we also previously discussed how the fans were giving Seth a lot of credit for agreeing to do everything he did during WrestleMania 40 weekend. Seth Rollins did rush back from an MCL injury suffered in January just to be ready in time for WrestleMania 40, but it looks like his knee wasn't 100% healthy quite yet, and he left WrestleMania weekend with some more serious damage to his meniscus. Becky Lynch was the first one to break the news that Seth Rollins had knee surgery the week after WrestleMania 40 to fix up that knee injury that's been bothering him. So this new reveal that Seth had to have surgery done to his knee after WrestleMania really does paint him out to be a huge MVP after all. He delayed the surgery so that he could compete at WrestleMania 40 and do his part. And after it was all settled and done, that's when he went for the surgery. So it's a work ethic that you really just have to honor from Seth Rollins. As far as the recovery time for Seth, 
things are still very vague there in that department. Reports claim that it wasn't a major procedure, then probably you're looking at two to four months. But if it was a major procedure, you're looking at eight months at the most. So those details aren't out quite yet, but maybe it's safe to assume that Seth Rollins will at least miss several months of action following his injury. Seth's deal has also been reported to be up in June, so if he does return to WWE following this recovery, he'll likely be on a brand new deal with the WWE. New interesting reports just came out regarding the original planned ending for WrestleMania 39. According to reports, the initial ending for WrestleMania 30 Night's Night 2 main event was supposed to feature Cody Rhodes dethroning Roman Reigns and finishing his story at that event to become the undisputed WWE Champion. That was the ending that was locked in for a while, but upon further discussion, it was ultimately decided that Roman retaining at WrestleMania 39 could be a great route to go in because Roman and Jay could have another match and how that feud could launch Jey Uso into stardom as a singles competitor and a main event star. So the result was changed to Roman retaining at WrestleMania 39, and the plans with Jey Uso also planned out as they intended it to. It was also reported that Triple H and Vince McMahon didn't really clash on that call and that all parties agreed on it, but ultimately it was allegedly still Vince McMahon that had the final say in the decision for Roman to retain at WrestleMania 39. A lot of fans have been going back and forth on if this was the right or wrong move to push back Cody's win a full calendar year. But it does look like it was the right decision after all because Roman keeping the title did result in some more issues and developments happening within the bloodline last spring and summer, and it directly led to Jey Uso breaking free of the group and becoming a big main event player over on Raw. Plus, with WrestleMania 40, you had The Rock constantly being around to add more high stakes to Cody Rhodes' title match at WrestleMania. So it means it feels even more special. So in the end, it does look like everything worked out for Roman to retain the title until WrestleMania 40, and everyone still wins. Fans are happy about Cody Rhodes being the champion, and they're excited about that fresh title reign. And on the flip side, Bloodline fans still have a very exciting storyline to be thrilled about for Roman Reigns, considering that a very serious civil war is breaking out amongst the family in current day. So Roman and Cody both have intriguing things still going on, and it will be great to wait and see if their path will ever collide again in WWE. But what are your thoughts on today's stories? Leave your comments below, don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on, and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, guys.